I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I did a video on why Africa is underdeveloped despite our religiosity. And uh, my tag did, we might be worshiping God in sincere wrongness. You can be sincerely wrong. Now, if the purpose of a thing is not properly understood, abuse is inevitable. And when you don't know the functionality of an equipment, productivity is limited. It can even kill you. Now, why did God create man? God, if he wanted people to sing and praise and worship him, he already had angels, cherubim and seraphims that worship him. If you can understand the revelation that people like uh, Daniel and John saw of the throne of God, it is enormous. If it is worship, he has 24 elders that bow down and say, holy, holy, holy. God does not need anything from us. So he didn't create us because of offerings and tithes. And he did not create us because he wanted us to display his power. God can display his power anytime he chooses, any way he chooses. And in fact, the display of his power does not make people reverence God, fear God, or become one of the arrows that I will talk about later, which is relationship. The children of Israel saw the greatest number of miracles in the wilderness, but they were still rebellious. So why did God make man? And why is it that Africans have remained underdeveloped in several aspects, despite their religiosity? Number one, the Bible says that God made man in his image and likeness. That is resemblance and representation. If you make an image, it's a representation of something abstract or somebody. So we are supposed to be a representation of God, a resemblance of God. And then we are supposed to represent him. Let me take the first one, resemblance. God created this beautiful earth, the galaxies and the Milky Ways, from an, a, a, a distorted situation that was formless, dark, and void. But the Spirit of God was incubating this earth, at least. Now, you, as a Christian, if you have the resemblance of God, you are supposed to be creative. If you look at the Niagara Falls or the Victoria Falls, you will say, wow. I resolved one year that because I am godlike, wow. Any person that sees me doing anything or see what I have done will marvel and say, wow. Wow is the language of grace and performance and excellence. When God created the earth and created man, on the sixth day, he revealed what he had done. Or is it the seventh day? He revealed what he, was, he had done. And it was very good. He started with good and then ended up with very good. Wow. When God created Eve out of the rib of Adam, when Adam woke up, he said, wow, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. If you go to Israel, what you will say is, wow, how can a small nation about one fortieth of the population of the Middle East resist them and not be conquered by them? How can a nation turn a desert to a flourishing nation? How can a nation excel in medicine, in science, in economics, in military technology, and 
in in uh, in econo in finance. The nation of Israel and the Jewish race has won more Nobel prizes than the whole of the rest of the world. So, if Africa is to progress, we must review our theology and our preaching to emphasize creativity and excellence. When any time humanity was confronted by a problem, God found a solution. That is to say, even Jesus Christ himself, if there was a problem of lack of bread, not, not, not enough fish, he created a solution. We, as Africans, our theology must not outsource responsibility to God through prayer. That song, I hate that song, prayer is the key, prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. No, he did not start with prayer. He started with responsibility and ended with accomplishment. It is finished. So the theology must change. As I'm preaching now, as I'm speaking here, if you listen carefully, there are some people singing in the background. Say, church, they disturb me all the time. And you go there, mostly poor people. So, mostly unproductive people. So, represent, I mean, resemblance. Resemblance is that you will hate what God hates. God hates iniquity. So, you hate iniquity. God hates disorder. Let me tell you the, the commandments were not given for us to make heaven. No, in fact, we might not even reside with God in heaven. It's going to create a new earth where we will dwell in. And there will be no more oceans or seas. There will only be rivers with a tree of life planted along the streams and we will eat of them and we will be renewed. So God gave the commandments, the statutes for order, for efficiency, for productivity, for in such a way that when we resemble him, we can be more effective. When he says, don't have sex with your relatives, it's so that we will not propagate weak genes. Weak genes. If animals do inbreeding, they propagate weak genes. My, I am AS, my wife is AS. If my children copulate, they will produce sicklers. Ironically, the male sickler suffers from infertility because God does not want that gene to be propagated. The female can produce because it's producing an egg. So when, when the Bible says, know that the whole creation is endlessly waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Now, when you have hair in your ears, your sons will have hair in their ears because the gene that carries, the chromosome that carries hair in the ears is in the Y chromosome. Um, the Y chromosome. So the, 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 you have hair, you see, the whole creation is tiptoeing, earnestly waiting the manifestation, the visualization, the tangibility of those who carry the nature of God. So, and he says you are neither male nor female. So it includes female sons of God and male sons of God. So ask yourself, the holiness is not piety. Holiness is hating what God hates and liking what God likes. Until Africans and the predominant religion in Africa are Muslims and Christians, and they come from the same source, Abraham, then you must realize that we must hate poverty, we must hate oppression, we must hate dirtiness, we must hate injustice if we are godly or godlike. So, resemblance. The next thing is, I was looking at where the Samaritans live in Israel. It's so clean, paint, painted white, so beautiful Samaritans in Israel. The nation of Israel is fascinating. Compare the nation of Israel with some other nations around. So, you should fascinate people. You should produce beauty. You should produce order. You should produce justice. 
You should find solutions to needs in your environment. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. Then the next thing is representation. We are supposed to be the equivalent of God amongst humanity. What is anointing? Anointing is the connection of divinity to humanity to bring down the tangibility of divinity to humanity. That is to say, you step down the glory of God to retail God. You retail God. You don't, God does not come wholesale. You retail him. Because you are having the same spirit as Christ. That is why the Holy Spirit is called, I will give you another comforter. It's Alos Paracletos. And so you are supposed to, to represent him. When you are representing, you present him again for those who don't know him, who have not seen him. So when the governor is being represented, he does not say, the governor said, the person who is reading the speech, he said, I am going to do, I am going to do. That's why Elisha could say, according to my word. And that's why Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But such that I have, I give unto thee. I, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. The man did not walk, but Peter pulled him up, and the man stood up and walked. So Peter was representing Christ, who is a representation of God in the physical form. The fullness of the deity dwelt in him in the bodily form. The deity had to leave him for him to die. If not, he would not have died. And he would not have shed his blood. That's why I said, Father, why had thou forsaken me? The deity had to leave God, the physical God here on earth, for him to die. So, we are supposed to represent him. It says, um, and Peter also healed them. It is God that usually heals, but he healed them. So, we are supposed to have this consciousness that we are representing him. When an ambassador moves in a country, he carries the weight of his kingdom behind him. Africans have not learned to carry the weight. You see, I don't fear issues. I don't fear circumstances because I know him who is backing me. I drove a car here now. Somebody saw me, ah, daddy, you, you bought this one. I said, no, it was a gift. Expensive Mercedes. I am his ambassador. And ambassadors drive cars bought by the nation. On my 70th birthday, you will see the cars people will bring. I'm pre-informing you. I have been decreeing it to my boys and to my younger ones that I mentor. I say on my 70th birthday, you will buy cars and bring for me. But it will not affect your economy. Because you will be so rich, it will be an infinitesimal part of your economy. I just want to prove a point that you can serve God and still be wealthy and still be glamorous. I'm a simple man. I check most of the times. So, to represent him, you decree a thing, it comes to pass. You say a thing. That's why Jesus said, go in my name. Whoever, whosoever sin you forgive is forgiven. Whosoever you does not forgive his sin, the sin is not forgiven. Whatever you bind on earth, what is the meaning of bind? Whatever you limit on earth is limited in heaven. If two of you shall agree concerning a thing here on earth, it is agreed in heaven. Because you form the representation of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. And when two of you synergize, the presence, you, it is, you, bring the, you, you bring the presence of God into that place. So, we are supposed to be his representatives. But the theology of whoever is worrying you, wherever they take your name to, ancestral causes, demons and that, is a truth stretched too far, it has become a fallacy. I come from idolatrous background. My brothers are still worshipping idols. Those idols do not affect me. I welcome you back to the second part of this 
lecture on the reason why God created us. I've talked about resemblance. I've talked about representation. I want to talk about two other arrows as in rice. R number three, it is responsibility. Responsibility. The major problem in Africa is irresponsibility. If we can hold ourselves accountable and take charge of affairs, Africa will develop. We just like to occupy offices, have titles, make wealth without commensurate responsibility. The Bible says in the book of James that he who knows what is right and fails to do it is sin unto him. So the knowledge of good and evil was part of that tree that Eve ate in the Garden of Eden. And man has free will. So the reason that the Bible and the Quran and any other religious book exists is to provide a pathway for rightness. But for salvation, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to God excepting through him. So, for us Christians, the word of God represents the blueprint for responsibility. And if we profess to be Christians and we don't, do, we don't have a sense of responsibility, our society will be dysfunctional. I will not steal government money because I am a responsible citizen. I pay taxes because I'm a responsible citizen. I don't drive against traffic because I'm a responsible citizen. You don't cheat in my school because I'm a responsible citizen. If we light our little candles of responsibility in Africa, Africa will shine like a bright star. So, responsibility is the key issue. You will see a local government chairman drive through a road filled with refuse and grass to his office. It doesn't concern him. You will see a governor drive through a road that is very bad. The next time he will use a helicopter to fly over that road. It doesn't concern him. You are supposed to conduct elections and produce credible results. You will fail woefully as a professor. It does not concern you. You are not held accountable because you will deny. And because of irresponsibility, that's why Africans have constantly blamed the colonial masters, have constantly blamed demons, have constantly blamed the witches, and have never blamed themselves. If you want to know an irresponsible person, he or she has an entitlement mentality, always wanting people to do for him or her without being responsible to somebody or for anything. And so we have remained backward because we are irresponsible. The next thing is relationship. Prayer and even songs of worship are like the discussion and the dialogue between two lovers. If that seems too carnal, it's like the letter between an appreciative son and a responsible father. That's why I like the hymns. Most of what we sing today in church as worship songs are just mere entertainment. I want more of you, Jesus. 
He's not your boyfriend. <laughs> he is not your boyfriend. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of thy cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. Or fading away like the stars of the morning. The squirrel only remembered by what we have done. Responsibility. Not set and don't fall for gutter, matcha, matcha. Can you match somebody inside a gutter? Holy Ghost, you owe me something. You owe. How can you be bold enough to say Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost owes you something? What did he buy from you? Huh? Rubbish songs. Rubbish songs. And then you dance and gesticulate with iniquity, wickedness, carnality. What is it, African Christians? African Christians. I went with one of them. It was just basically traditional idol, idolatrous dancing that they were doing. I went to a church in South Africa. I saw the girl singing. It is her, it is her figure and her sexuality that was being emphasized, not Christ. That's why there's too much immorality in our churches. Too much of adultery and fornication. Relationship. David said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. He knew when he offended God that the Holy Spirit had departed. The Holy Spirit has left a lot of churches in Africa. The relationship between you and the Holy Spirit, he will lead you into all truth, revelation. He will teach you. He will comfort you. He will convict you. So relationship. How many of us have relationship with God? If you have relationship with God, you will not deliberately go into sin. You will not think of killing. You will not think of stealing. Relationship. It is that relationship that is not intimate enough. That's why we are not getting the power made manifest. If a magnet stays near a piece of iron, that piece of soft iron acquires magnetic properties. If you use plantain leaf to wrap soap in Africa, that leaf starts to foam. When Moses stayed in the presence of God, there was an induction of the glory of God over Moses. It was after he departed that the glory started fading. But today he resides in us. He teaches us. He reminds us. And so we are supposed to manifest his glory by an intimate relationship. But we have more relationship with our pastors, our denominations, than with God. That's why Africa is not producing Christians that can know the will of God, manifest the glory of God, and speak on behalf of God. I wish that these things will sink into our hearts. I discussed with a pastor who came to visit me. They are going to review um, African theology, the teaching of theology in African Bible schools. And I shared some of these things with him. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. Subscribe to my channel and visit my online bookshop, petrapublications.com, and share these videos, like them, God bless you.